I'm Ashley here at the museum. We are delighted that you could join us for our first ever New Year in a Box. You should all have your box kits ready to follow along with today's programming. We've got crafts and magic and music to rock out to as we get closer and closer to the Noon Year Countdown. We're gonna start today by talking a little bit about the museum and the land that we're on since that's where we're filming. The museum is in downtown Kitchener in Ontario and this land has been home to Indigenous people for generations. As settlers, we're grateful for the chance to be here and we thank all the past people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Long before today, there have been Indigenous people who have been stewards of this place. For the museum's region, those people are the Neutral, the Anishinaabe, and the Haudenosaunee peoples. The museum is on land called the Haldeman Tract that was promised to the Six Nations. That promised land includes six miles on either side of the Grand River, which is a huge waterway that runs all the way through our region down to Lake Erie. Now I can talk about where I am at the museum, but I don't know where you are and what I just explained may not be true from where you're tuning in from. I encourage you to check out resources like this to learn more about where you live and your region. So you've probably taken a peek at your New Year box and you may have noticed a bit of a dinosaur theme. That's because the museum is excited about our new exhibitions starting in January. One of those exhibitions is all about feathered dinosaurs and it's called <clears throat> Dinosaurs, the Age of Big Weird Feathered Things. So you've seen dinos in your box. There's dinosaur stickers, there's even a dinosaur crayon. We want you to get as pumped as we are for the new exhibition. The other exhibition that we'd really like you to come and check out is Sonica, the Sound Experience. It's an art exhibition where all the pieces have to do with sound, and it's going to be a lot of fun, I promise. So the crafts you're doing today will link with sound. And that leads us to our first activity with Claire, who's gonna show you how to make a megaphone. Take it away, Claire. Thank you, Ashley. So today's first activity is going to be making our megaphones. Here's one that I made earlier, and you should have one in your box as well. Megaphones are a great way to make yourself even louder without having to yell. The cone helps you direct all your sound into one direction, and I'm going to show you how that seems. So I'm going to show you guys, here's me just talking normally, and I'm going to spin around and see if it gets a little louder when I get close to the microphone or, or how it sounds. Hello! Okay, but now let's try it with our megaphones. So as I said, the megaphone should be directing my voice into one direction. When I don't have it, my voice just kind of goes everywhere. So let's try that again. Hello! Did it get louder when I got closer? Did it sound a little bit different? Think about that. And speaking of sound, today we're going to be making these megaphones because it relates to an exhibition we're going to be opening in January called Sonica, the sound experience. And that's an exhibit that has all different sorts of um, ex uh, installations and art pieces that have to do with sound. So let's get into making our megaphones. So in your box, there's a few things you'll find, you, you would have found, and there's a few things you need to go find around the house. So in your box, you should have a megaphone template. It looks like this. You should also have some tissue paper that was probably helped uh, wrap in your box and decorate it, but we're gonna use it to decorate our megaphones. You should also have some foam stickers. And what you're gonna need to find around your house is just some coloring pencils or markers or crayons, whatever you have and you wanna use to decorate your megaphone. And also you may need some glue. And finally, the last thing you may need is an adult. When you, we get to the step where we put it together, you may need a little bit of help just to fold it and put it all together like that. So maybe go find an adult or see if they're available in a few minutes. So let's get started decorating our megaphones. I think I'm gonna write Happy New Year since we are celebrating New Year's Eve today. And then maybe at, at noon, we're gonna wanna shout to everyone that it's the new year. So I'm gonna write Happy New Year. I'm just going to switch markers though. Oh, that was... And does anyone know what year it's going to be next year? Next year is going to be 2021. Pretty exciting. Oh. 
I'm gonna switch to crayons. This is a cool color. And you can decorate your crown however you want. I mean, not your crown, your microphone. And let's write 2021 underneath. Oh, that's a nice marker. And let's draw some little stars on our thing. You could also draw some balloons if you wanted. Those are kind of festive. And we have some balloons behind me here. Okay, I think I'm gonna add in some of my foam stickers now. Now these foam stickers might have a little paper on the back that you'll just need to peel off carefully and then you should stick them right on. You might not even need any glue. This is a cute little dolphin. A clownfish. And now I'm gonna add some tissue paper. I'm just trying to think, if you wanna see how your, your megaphone is gonna look, you can also just pretend to kind of fold it like this, just to see how your design looks when it's in its kind of cone shape. I'm trying to make some streamers again. Oops. Maybe I'll just make some confetti. To glue on to my megaphone. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with that design. So now I need to start putting it together. So you might have seen there's some little holes on this side here. And then on the other side, there's also some little uh, tabs coming off of it. And so those are gonna help us when we go to put this together. So I'm just gonna kind of crease mine a little bit. 
these ones here on the tips have little wings that you're gonna need to fold in to fit them through the hole. Okay, so then you're gonna kind of roll it together in half and you'll see the little tabs that we had just folded over should match up pretty well to the other side. So right in the middle is a hole here and you're gonna take this longer square tab and feed it through the hole. Oh, this one. So it goes into the middle inside of your crown, or of your megaphone. <laughs> I keep saying crown. And then you're gonna line up the other holes as well. You should be left with two holes. So this is the section that I said you may need an adult to help you put it together. It can just be a little bit tricky to fit the things into the hole and have it stay. So this might be a good time to grab your adult and have them help you. If it comes undone, that's all right. Just keep trying to get it into those holes and you may need some glue or tape to help keep the tabs uh, where they need to be. Okay, I got the first one in. Again, as I said, it can be a little tricky. So maybe get someone to give you a hand. Perfect, I got the other one in and now just the middle piece. There we are. So I'm just gonna crease those down a little bit. Take out my streamers from the end. And there you have it. You have your own megaphone. So it should look like this when it's all together, although your decorations are gonna be different than mine. And now you can ring in the new year. Happy New Year! Woo! Thanks a lot, Claire. Now, if you haven't finished coloring your craft, don't worry, you've got the whole morning to finish it. And if you struggle a little bit with assembling the megaphone, please ask a grown up, it can be a little fiddly. Now we're gonna jump from our sound craft over to our first performance. The team from Theatrics are here to give us a fun magic show with a bit of juggling. We hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, I'm DJ. And Thanks. I'm Simon. And we're from Theatrics and we're here to do a little bit, woo, magic and juggling just for you. Um, how about I start with some magic and you go off and get the juggling all warmed up. Sounds good. All right, okay. All right, well, hey, magic hat's gotta come off right now. I'm gonna take off the scarf because it's a little warm in here. And I don't need the tennis ball anymore. Okay, so magic. What is magic? Magic is fun, magic's cool. You can learn how to do magic from books, from the internet, from friends, from family. And I am going to be showing you how to do some magic later on today. But right now, I want you to focus on what we're doing right here. I'm gonna do a little warm up with everybody because it's important to get ourselves warmed up. Get our brains, get our eyes, get our bodies warmed up for some magic and juggling. And I'm gonna take my little clown nose. It's like a clown nose, like see like this? Hopefully nobody's afraid of clowns. I got a clown nose. Maybe it's Rudolph's nose, I don't know. And I'm gonna make it vanish right before your eyes. Watch carefully because it goes from this hand to that hand right here. It goes from that hand to this hand right here. Now if I asked you to yell at the screen, which hand is it in, is it gonna be here or here? Which one? Here, you're correct, <laughs> yeah. And there you go, that's a pretty cool trick, huh? No, you wanna see a little differently? Okay, watch carefully, I'm gonna go a little faster. It goes from this hand, it goes to this hand, it goes to this hand, it goes to this hand, it goes from this hand to this hand, this hand, like that. Now if I said to you, is it in this hand here, or is it in this hand here? What are you gonna yell at the screen? Here, you are correct, that's two for two. Now I'm gonna have to get a little bit harder. This time I am gonna fool you. 
And I'm going to fool you because what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm not going to say it's going here. I'm not going to say it's going there. I'm not going to say it's going anywhere. Watch carefully because I take it from this hand and it's moving. And as it's moving, I am going to do something what's called a scrunch. Watch carefully. I scrunch it like this. Now at this point, I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. You have to watch carefully because the ball is in one of these hands. Now you could pick this hand here, or you could pick this hand here. It's totally up to you which hand you're going to pick. Let me hear. You said this hand here. Unfortunately, that's incorrect, and that's where the black ball is. See, you were supposed to look for the red ball, correct? What's yeah, the red ball. If you picked the other hand here, no, you would have found the red square. I'm sorry, red square, black ball. Uh, I guess maybe I fooled you. That's magic. It's a little trick. It's a little bit of fun. But it's been around for a really long time. So long, in fact, I want to show you the oldest magic trick in existence. It involves a pair of scissors. And it involves a piece of rope. Now this is called the Egyptian cut and restored rope trick. Some people call it the Chinese cut and restored rope trick. Some people will call it the Mesopotamian cut and restored magic trick. It's been around for over 2,000 years. I call this the home hardware cut and restored rope trick because I got the rope from home hardware. All right. Now what's going to happen is we're going to cut this in half and not me, you, the audience, you are going to put it back into one whole piece. Sounds impossible, but no, you can do it. What we're going to do is we have to find the exact center of the rope. The exact center of the rope is done this way. We get the two ends like this. We come down here and we're going to find a loop. We make a loop here at the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut the loop. Not my fingers, not anything else, just the loop. I cut the loop. I don't need a scissor anymore. Do not try this at home. I'm going to toss them off to the side. Ow! Oh, sorry, Simon. That's why we don't do that at home. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this down like this and I'm going to take this down like this and this around like this and around like that. You can see now we've got our two ends of our rope here at the top and two ends at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to magically, <coughs> sorry, you are magically going to put this back into one whole piece. What we have to do is we have to do a thing called a distraction. If there are any grown-ups sitting beside you, you need to distract them. Wave your hands like this. Jump up and down. Go do something to distract the grown-ups. Ready? Distract. As you're distracting them, make sure they don't look at the screen. Don't let them look at the TV. Don't let them look at the computer. Whatever you're watching this on, don't let them look at it. Now, right before your very eyes, not me, you, have put this rope back into one whole piece. We cut it with a rope. Or sorry, we cut the rope with the scissors. <laughs> and you have magically put it back into one whole piece. Fantastic, huh? Look at that. Take a good look at that, huh? One whole piece. What? Oh, the grown-ups are saying, it's just tied together. Yes, it looks like that, doesn't it? It looks like it's just tied together. But if we look at this not really carefully, and I mean really carefully, look at that knot. You can see that that knot can come right off. And you guys restored the rope. Thank you. The world's oldest magic trick. Well, actually, I think juggling might actually be older than magic. No, 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 no. You think juggling, throwing stuff is older than magic? Absolutely. Well, then, all right, well, show us what you got. Okay, all right. Well, I am a juggler, that means I throw things. That's about it, but, but it's old. People have been throwing things for, for centuries. Now, a juggler will always start with one ball. Now, one ball, I can throw something in the air and catch it, but you have to perfect one ball if you want to move on to more. Watch the art of one ball juggling. Thank you. Now that was just one ball. That was one ball. How about we add a second ball? Two balls. Two juggling balls twice as hard. Watch. One in the air, two in the air. Two 
in the air. Watch as one ball twice juggles around in the air. Twice the power. Now you're sitting at home, you're like, oh, one ball, two ball. That's not even cool. I don't even call that juggling. Okay, let's try a third ball. Okay, three balls, let's say three. One, two, three. Three juggling balls. Let's see if I can do this. One, two, three. Yeah, three ball, no, okay, okay, watch. As I add the third ball into the pattern. Bam, yeah, no, okay, they all need to be in the air, they all need to be in the air. One, two, three, three juggling balls. Boom, boom, boom. All right, under the arms, under the arms, under the leg, boom, under the leg a lot. Boom, 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 behind the back. Now I can juggle on one leg. Ooh, I can do you better than that. I can juggle on two legs, twice the power, right? No? Okay. Now that's, that's three balls. I can juggle kind of normally, but watch me show you a trick that I can actually juggle on a motorcycle. You don't believe me? Watch. <sighs> Juggling on a motorcycle. <sighs> Oops. Juggling on a motorcycle. Okay, so that was, that was three balls. I think we should step it up a little. Maybe four, five, six, seven, eight. How about nine? I think you guys want to see nine ball juggling. You guys have deserved it. Let's see if I can get nine balls in the air. Okay, so with me, I have nine juggling balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They all need to be up in the air above my head. Nine balls in the air in three, four, five, sorry, in three, two, one, nine ball juggling. Give it up, let me hear that applause, yeah. No? Oh, they're, they're tied together? Oh. <laughs> Whoopsies. Why don't we send Simon back to practice a little bit more, huh? We'll do some, we'll do some magic now. Keep practicing, maybe you can get up to like 12 ball juggling. Glue yeah. a, a few more together, yeah. Well, uh, this is the part of the show where we like to remind everyone, because we're at the museum, we do believe in making sure that we are environmentally responsible, and we always like to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Uh, just over there, I, uh, when I was taking my little break, I did find uh, an empty pop bottle, and there was no green bin or blue bin or any recycling bin around, so I thought maybe I could use my lunch bag. Uh, I finished my lunch earlier <laughs> before the show. So I'm gonna make this reduce, reuse, and recycle right for you guys. Now watch carefully as I wave my hand like this. That pop bottle is now gone. Whoa. But don't worry. If I need to find that green bin, blue bin, recycling bin, I wave my hand like this and I can bring it back and I can put it inside the bin anytime I want. Now you might say, oh, I'd like to see a bit closer. Sure, watch. Wave my hand. It's gone, completely vanished. But don't worry, don't panic. Whoop, it's back. <laughs> All right, what, what, one more time, can you, yeah, okay, watch carefully, because it's in the bag. I wave my hand like this, it has now been reduced, reused, recycled. It is gone, completely gone. Yeah, seriously, gone. <laughs> you think I just, <laughs> they, they think I'm just holding on. <laughs> they think I'm just holding, <laughs> look, if I was just holding on to it, I couldn't do any magic, right? Okay, all right, all right, all right. I hear you, I hear you guys. That was just some fun, all right? And we had some fun with juggling, some fun with magic. Let's see if, uh, let's see, I've, Simon's probably practicing over there. Let's see if he's got something a little bit more than those nine ball juggles. Okay, okay. So you saw balls in the air. I think, I think we want to give it a step up to so something a little bit more dangerous. And what is more dangerous than a 
plunger. You don't think it's dangerous? <laughs> it's been used <sighs> by DJ. <sighs> Not only one, we have two plungers and three plungers. Number one, number two, number two, and number three. Watch as three plungers flip into the air. Hopefully I do not touch the stinky toilet, okay? One, two, three, and they're off. Gross, under the arm, under the other arm, under both arms, and under all three arms. Whoa! Okay, double flip, double flip. Wham, blam! Okay, I got a joke for you, I got a joke for you. What is a ninja's favorite drink? Anybody? A ninja's favorite drink? No? It's Wata! Wata! Hoya! 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 Ho! 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 Yeah! Okay, I got something else to show you. I got something else to show you. This, this is a level. I just got it. It's brand new. Watch. Set it down on the ground. Okay, I'm juggling. Now, I'm juggling on a new level, yeah! Okay, no, yeah. Okay, that made me laugh, that's fine. Okay, okay. Plunger, juggling. Ugh. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All we've seen you do is throw some stuff in the air. Juggling! All right, we're supposed to be doing juggling and magic, okay? Can you do a magic trick? Can I? Of course I can do a magic okay. trick. Okay, all right, let's see Simon do some magic, yeah. Oh boy, okay. Well, uh, to do a magic trick, I, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need help from a little, uh, some props. Uh, the prop I'm gonna use is none other than a balloon. Ooh, stretchy, stretchy. You gotta stretch it out first and then blow it up. And then blow it up. And hold on. And blow it. Blow it up. One. Come on. Blow up a simple balloon. Okay, I'm gonna need help from somebody out there watching from their screen. Which, put your hand up right now. Uh, I pick you in the red shirt, okay? I love the red. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna need you to take a piece of your hair, plunk it out, don't hurt yourself though, and I want you to just toss it at the screen. Boom, thank you. Okay, we're gonna use this magic piece of hair. We're gonna tie it around the balloon, like so. And watch as your magic hair bends. Now, with the help of your magic hair, I can do some impressions. Watch as my impression of Robin Hood. Whoop, boing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I'm actually a professional balloonist, which means I can make balloon animals really, really fast. I've actually beat the world record of balloon animal making. I can make it in under a second, okay? Watch the first balloon animal in three, two, one. A snake. Thank you. No, that didn't count? Okay, okay, give me another try. One more try, one more try. And three, two, one. It's a worm. No? Okay, one more try. It's a pickle. Okay, okay, one, one more. This is, this is a balloon animal. You guys need to guess what this is. Any guesses? Any guesses? No? How about now? How about now? Guitar? Maybe a guitar? Okay, close. It's actually an air guitar. <laughs> it's full of it. That's okay, that's okay. Okay, so, so you wanted a, a, a magic trick. Okay, I'm actually going to ask DJ to, go, to come up onto the stage, please. Okay. Please come up onto the stage. Uh, I'm on my way. All right, yes. Now, I want you to name any animal. Real any or fake, animal. any animal, 
and watch as it comes to life. Any animal at all? Any animal at all. Snake. Ta-da. Ooh, okay. Okay, we're gonna try once more. Okay. Maybe um, a mythological animal. Ooh, mythological. Uh, a unicorn. A unicorn? Okay, watch. I think, yeah, you see the horn? Yeah, 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 nice. It's a dog, and its name is Unicorn. Oh. Yeah. Okay, okay, we're, we're gonna give him, give him a few details. We're gonna give him a few okay. details. Using a Sharpie, we're gonna give him some eyeballs. All right. There's an eyeball, there's an eyeball. Okay. We're gonna give him a little nose. Yeah. Yeah, and then some spots. You need some uh -huh. spots. Uh-huh. And there is your Unicorn. Now, many people know unicorns are actually very magic. So it's not going to be me doing the magic trick. It's going to be the unicorn. So uh, do you actually have your magician? Do you have a deck of cards on you? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I always have a deck of cards on Of course. OK. okay. I want you to pull that out. You can set unicorn down. Just okay. Do not pop it. OK. Unicorn, do not pop it. Stay. OK. OK. Deck of cards. Perfect. I want you to take the cards out. OK. I want you to ripple through it to, to find a random card. You want to cut the deck and, and take the one on your top. Like that? Like just do it? Absolutely. Do not okay. let me see. Okay. Have you got it? I have it. Okay, I want you to look at it, memorize it, I want you to show the audience, and I want you to show your unicorn, okay? Show the audience, yeah. Okay, don't say anything, guys. Don't say anything. I, I gotta show the unicorn, I'm gonna show the unicorn. Okay. Okay, what do I do with the card now? Okay, hide the card. Hide don't let it. me see it. Okay, got it, it's hidden. Perfect, okay. Now I told you unicorns are very magic. I want you to pick up the unicorn. Okay. And I want you to show the audience its nose. Nose? Its nose, yeah. Just show the audience its nose, okay? Oh, show the audience its nose, okay. All right, look at here. There's a unicorn nose. It's a okay. nose. Oh. It's a heart, isn't it? That's a heart. Okay. It, is your card a heart? Oh, uh, yes, it is. Okay, okay. That's cool. Unicorn did half the trick. Okay. Unicorn, I want you to show its back. I want you to count how many spots are on its back. On its back? Well, kids, can you help me out here? I see one, two, three. Three spots three on spots. it. Three spots. So is the unicorn telling us that your card was the three of hearts? Our card was the three of hearts. Three of hearts. That's one magic Whoa, unicorn. That is a very magic unicorn. Absolutely. I'm gonna take him, I'm gonna take him for walks. This is All gonna right. be great. Unicorn, we're gonna go for a walk. It's gonna be awesome. Wow. So I think I think you need to do something now. Okay, I've been, all right, I've been fine. up for okay, hours. Okay, okay. The unicorn, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And one of the things that we're doing today is we're gonna be doing a lesson later on, and we're gonna be doing some some tricks. And I thought, you know what? We should do a coin trick ourselves. And because they're at home, I thought maybe we would do a a, a larger coin trick. Um, I have a, a handkerchief. I'll come up here on the next level, of course. And I've got a really big coin. You can see, woo, <laughs> it's a big coin. And I'm gonna try to make this coin disappear. Now, to make it disappear, magicians will always use a distraction. Like, I might say, oh, hey, look up there. And, every, and when everybody's looking up top, um, I will quickly take the coin and maybe I'll hide it in my pocket or I might put it uh, in my shoe or possibly it'll go up my sleeve, okay? Now, I'm gonna get my handkerchief here and I, I think I might, I might need your help here, Simon, at some point, not right away, not right away, but at some point I might need your help, okay? And ladies and gentlemen, when, when we're doing this, whoop, I'm dropping things everywhere, um, when we do this, what I want you to do at home is I want you to really watch carefully the coin, all right? Now, the coin itself is going to vanish. And when it vanishes, I'm going to use this handkerchief as a curtain, all right? I'm going to make it vanish. And I want you to watch carefully the two parts of this because you're going to watch the curtain and you're going to watch the coin. So you gotta put one eye on the coin, one eye on the curtain. Now, in order to make this vanish, I'm gonna make a little bag. I go like this. I take the four corners and I put it together like that, okay? 
And I'm going to take the coin and I stick it inside the bag, like so. And it's in the bag. You can see that it's in there because there's the weight of it and you can see the shape of it. It's inside the bag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it vanish. But while I make it vanish, I'm going to make a distraction by saying, hey, look up there. And as you look up there, I make it vanish. Um, okay, let's try that one again. Okay, um, so I'm going to make this coin vanish. I want you to watch the scarf and watch the coin. Eye on one, eye on the other. Um, okay, so I'm going to make a little bag like this. Um, okay, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to stick it inside like this, okay? And then I'm going to uh, distract it by saying, hey, look up there. And as you look up there, I drop it and it... disappears. Um, okay, let's try that again. <laughs> um, okay, uh, all right, let me see, I'm, okay, okay, uh, got the scarf, got a coin. I told him to watch the coin, he watched the, okay, all right, you're watching, okay, you got, okay. All right, I make a bag. I put this together like this. Now, I take this and I'm gonna stick the coin inside the bag like this. Okay, it's inside the bag, okay. I asked them to look up there. So look up there! Ooh. Please work, please work, please work, please work. And the coin is gone. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. You made it vanish. Where could it possibly go? Well, we said this is a magic and juggling show. What I actually did is I took the coin out when you weren't looking and I threw it up into the air. It's still up there. Spinning, 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 spinning. Maybe somebody can get, you can help me out. We can, we can see if we can see it up there. The, the ceilings are really high in the museum. It's really spinning. I think it's still going. Spinning, spinning, and it's coming down. It's coming down. Look out! It's coming fast. It's coming fast. Look out! Oh! Oh! Are you okay, Simon? You okay? Ow, something hit my foot. Your foot? Are you all right? Or check it out. What's in? I think what? In my shoe. What is what? that? Oh, <laughs> there's the coin. That's the coin. What? <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? Coins are fun. It's a lot of cool things to do some magic. But you know what? I think it's time for us to do the big story, the big finish. Absolutely. Do you mind? Can you, take, you can just take all that stuff off. Stay the scarf and the coin. And, and I over here have a little table I'm going to bring on stage. Stool, a table, it's something kind of cool. Now my grandfather was a magician. And in fact, you saw me earlier, I was wearing his magic hat. It's an old magic hat. Some people say, is it like Frosty's hat? You put it on a snowman, they're gonna come to life. No, it's just a magician's hat. And the one thing about it is if you take a really good look here, we call this a blackout. Ooh. As you can see that inside the hat, there's somebody living in there. And you might say, well, who's living inside a hat? Well, you see, my grandfather, he's Irish. And he has a little friend, a little leprechaun, that lives inside the hat. Kind of appropriate because it is a bit of a top hat. And his friend, the leprechaun, likes to play games. Now, you at home, when you play games, what do you roll? Yeah, dice. Luckily, I have a dice or a die with me. That's what one, one is called. And my grandfather said that the leprechaun that lives inside this hat likes to play games. You put the hat down and you give the leprechaun a dice or die, okay? This, in this case, we have only one and it's a nice big one. And we put it inside the hat. And we close up the box. Now this leprechaun likes to play games. And what he does is he takes that dice, and when you're not looking, <laughs> he puts it inside the box. Well, you might say that's pretty impressive, but that's only half of the trick. Because when you're not looking again, the leprechaun takes that die from the box and puts it back <laughs> in the hat. 
Now you might be thinking, that's not a really good leprechaun magic, is it? Well, let me show you again. Watch, when you're not looking, he puts it from the hat into the box. It's inside. He's gonna take it from the box back to the hat. And there it is. Just like that. What? Oh, I can see, yep. Oh, that one in the red shirt that you had then before, yeah, they're, 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 they're frowning at me. They're, say, they're waving their hands, they're saying, no, that's not a magic trick. Fine. There is no leprechaun in the hat, okay? I was just pretending. But uh, could I pretend to be the leprechaun? Can I pretend to put and do all the magic? Can I? Okay, all right, okay. I'll show you it actually moving, okay? <clears throat> Here I go. Look at me, I'm a leprechaun. Look how small I am. Whoa! And I put the die inside the box like that. Look, it's gone. What's that you say on the other side? <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> oh, you say it's back on the other side? <laughs> it's gone again. <laughs> uh, uh, no, other side? Sure. It's gone. <laughs> See, leprechauns are real. <laughs> it's pretty cool, huh? Oh, you want both doors open. Absolutely, because you've been such an amazing audience here for us. One, two, it is gone. Seriously, I can't, can't see it, it's gone. What, open, <laughs> open all four. <laughs> all four. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, Daniel, can you cut the video feed now? Like, just turn it off and we go to black, go to music, just, uh, just cut the, no, seriously, dude, cut the cake. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. <laughs> Our video guy is not helping, so. Uh... Okay, one, two, three of the doors. It is gone. Okay. Four doors. I told you, when you're not looking, the leprechaun was going to put it back in the hat. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys, for being part of our show, juggling and magic and all that stuff. And uh, hopefully we're going to see you later on because we got some lessons to teach. All right. Happy New Year to everybody. Wow, Theatrix, that was amazing. I had a super great time. Did you guys have a good time too? Don't worry. They're going to be back a little later. They've got some other cool things planned for us. But next up, it's time to move and groove and stretch our legs with our musical act. Give a great big round of applause for the Peanut Butter Jams. Yeah! Let the wind and the rain and the hail blow high and the ice come traveling through the sky. Oh, Jack Frost and the Winter Queen will blow into town and get the people same. Keep me warm, keep me cozy. My nose is red and my cheeks are rosy. Wrap me up and give me a hug. Keep me snug as a bug in a rug. That winter queen came from the snow with rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. Jack jumped up to swing her about. They do a little dance and then they shout. Keep me warm, keep me cozy My nose is red and my cheeks are rosy Wrap me up and give me a hug Keep me snug as a bug in a rug Every night they'd go out to play And they'd paint the town in icy gray I've never seen such a lovely pair Making a masterpiece out of the winter air And singing, keep me warm, keep me cozy My nose is red and my cheeks are rosy Wrap me up and give me a hug Keep me snug as a bug in a rug Keep me warm, 
keep me cozy. My nose is red and my cheeks are rosy. Wrap me up and give me a hug. Keep me snug as a bug in a rug. Keep me warm, keep me cozy. My nose is red and my cheeks are rosy. Wrap me up and give me a hug. Keep me snug as a bug in a rug. Keep me snug as a bug in a rug. Keep me snug as a bug in a rug. Hey, everybody. I see some drums back there, but I don't know where our drummer is. Do you? There he is. That's better. All right, let's dance. guys, that was a bit of a workout. I hope you had fun dancing. Did you notice in your box there was a gold coin? Now that's not dinosaur themed and it's not sound themed either. Well, I've got a special surprise. Theatrix is going to teach you how to do a magic trick with that gold coin. So go get that coin from your box and grab it so you can follow along as they teach you some cool magic. Well, hey, we're back, uh, and hey, thanks to the, for the introduction there. We're, we're going to be teaching you how to do magic. And now, magic is an illusion. It's a trick. It's a, a, a skill to help try to pass the time, maybe fool somebody, have some fun. And in your box, you got uh, a gold coin. It might be very similar to the one I have here. Uh, if, that, if the coin's a little bit too big for your hands, um, ask grown up, get a, you can get like a loony or a quarter. Um, sometimes I use like a larger, what's called a half dollar. Uh, different things, depends on the size of your hands. All right, so we've got, oh, and Simon's got a really big, the really big coin from earlier that, it, that was in his shoe. Um, he's gonna use that one. We're gonna be teaching you how to do um, a production, how to make the coin appear. We're also gonna teach you how to make the coin disappear. The first thing we have to learn how to do is we have to learn what's called palming. Now, palming is where you actually hide the coin in your hand and making sure that nobody can uh, tell you have it. There are two ways you can do it. The first and most simplest way um, is what I call a finger palm, where we just put the coin in the bottom part of our fingers and we just curl our fingers slightly. That's all we have to do. And you can see how I can, I'm standing here. You can see I can hold my hand like this. I can point. I can scratch my nose, don't pick it. I can scratch my, my, my cheek. I can actually even do a thumbs up. It's really important that we can just hold our hand kind of naturally. So if I'm standing here, I want both my hands to kind of look the same. That's the easiest way of hiding the coin and that's called our finger palm, just right here in our fingers. The second one, which is a little bit harder, and that's where we actually are gonna palm it in the palm of our hand. It's called a classic palm or a thumb palm because we have to use our thumb muscle to, to help hold it. 
okay? So I'm gonna over exaggerate a little bit here. But you can see what I'm kind of doing. I'll bring it to the camera a little bit more. You can see that I'm squeezing it with, with my hand. Now, but I can't walk around like this. It looks like I'm getting ready to do a puppet show. Um, so again, you have to try to make your hand look natural. So you can have your, your hand like a fist, or again, I can do thumbs up, I can point, I can scratch my chin, scratch my nose, point at Simon. Hey, Simon, Simon, there he is. <laughs> point at him. So again, wherever you're gonna hide it, make sure it's kind of a natural position. So either finger palm, which is the one I like doing a lot because it's it, I find it simpler and easier, or you're going to do the full palm or thumb palm like that. Now that's really important because you want to be able to keep the coin hidden. So we're going to teach you, before we teach you how to disappear, we're going to teach you how to make the coin up here because right now it is hidden. Nobody can see it. There's two ways you're going to make it appear. The first way is the easiest one. And it's so simple, it's called the clap. All you have to do is do this, clap. And a coin appears in your hand. So try that again. You have it palmed in your hand. Just standing here normal, nothing ordinary. You can point at that bird up there, thumbs up to somebody, and when you're ready, the coin appears. That's pretty simple. That's easy to do. You can do it, it doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, because again, you're pointing, clap, and the coin appears. Now the second way to make it appear, it's a little bit trickier, but I think if you practice it, you're going to be able to do this. Now, we do have to be very careful because, again, because of where we are in our bubbles and all this kind of stuff, normally we would teach you how to do this by being able to make the coin appear out of a friend's ear or their elbow or somewhere. And we have to be very respectful of our distance and stuff. So we're going to show you just how to make it appear out of the air. That way you can practice in case there's nobody around in your bubble that you feel free to practice on. But you, it's easy to adapt. You'll see in a minute how we do it. So when you have the coin palmed in your hand, you don't want to do the clap, you want to make it just appear in front of somebody. We call it the one, two, three. You're gonna move your hand up and down three times. On the first time, that coin that's palmed, you're getting it ready. See, I have it in my finger palm. On one, I have my thumb on it. On two, I slide it up to being right near my fingertips. And on three, when it comes at three, I push it right up to the tip. And so that everybody can see it when my hand comes down, it's right there. So let's try it again, I'll show you nice and slow. I have it in my finger palm. What was that? Hey, how you doing everybody? I'm gonna go on one, okay? I'm gonna open my hand so you can see it. On, so when I go up on one, I'm getting it ready. On two, it's right on the edge of the fingers, two. On three, I push it all the way up so that when I come down, I stop and I show everybody the coin. All right, so you have it, and you're gonna go one, two, three. And that's how quick it is. It's a very quick production, but you have to practice it. Because if you don't practice it, and you try to do it really fast right away, coins fly everywhere, okay? They will fly out of your hand, they'll fly on the floor, you don't want that to happen. So practice nice and slow. So finger palm, one, getting ready, two on the edge, three, I push it all the way up, and then present. Okay, so we have our finger palm, our full palm, our thumb palm, we have our clap, and now we have our one, two, three, produce. Now you can practice these things, take your time. Um, you know, if you, uh, you have access to this video, you can rewind, you can look, you can, you can check this stuff out. Mom and dad let you check it out on the internet. There's lots of examples of it. But now, how do we make it disappear? That's the one that people really love. That's the one that kids want everywhere. That's the one that everybody wants to learn how to do. Unfortunately, we're out of time, so we'll see you later. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. We'll teach that to you. All right. You're gonna hold the coin. Now, I'm right-handed, so I hold it in my left hand. If you're left-handed, hold it in your right hand. 
<laughs> Make sense? Yeah. Okay. You hold it in your hand, and what I like to do is I like to show the face of the coin. It doesn't matter if the heads or the tail, it doesn't matter, you show it. So you can see that I'm showing the coin. My hand is upside down, I can see the back of my, my, my wrist, I can see the under part of my hand. It's almost like I'm trying to hold a bowl of soup or something, okay? I'm here. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be coming in with this hand, like this. And I'm going to make it look like I'm actually grabbing the coin. That's where we want to fool everybody. We want them to watch this hand right here. Not here. Here. Not here. Here. So, I'm going to be coming in and I'm going to pretend to grab the coin. Just try that movement. Don't worry about the coin. Just, just come in and grab that and, and look at it and, and think, there's the coin right there. Just practice that a couple times. You just practice that a couple times because it's got to look natural. It can't be like, look at coin, uh, disappear. No, it has to be, has to be natural. Now, when you're ready, we do the next part. This next part is called the French drop. Um, it was invented by a French magician, hence why we call it the French drop. And you're going to have the coin just drop into your finger palm. Remember from the beginning? Into the finger palm. So I'm holding it with my thumb, it drops. Pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm coming in and as I pretend to grab that coin, notice how I make it look like I'm gonna grab it, I drop the coin at the same time. As I pretend to grab that coin, I'm looking at that hand. This hand just goes away into finger palm. And the coin is gone. Sorry, I went a little high there. Let's try it again. So I'm here. We come in. Pretend to grab, drop the coin. I look at this hand here. This hand goes down to finger palm. I look at it here. The coin is gone. Okay, we'll do it again. I'll turn a bit more sideways here. So, coming down, last possible second, pretend to grab, I drop the coin, finger palm, look at this hand, that's where the coin is. <gasps> no, it's not, it's gone. And then your coin is in a finger palm position, ready to make it appear, <laughs> come out of your ear, whatever, okay? So again, as you practice and speed it up, as you're coming in and grabbing, and making it disappear, then you can practice how to make it appear, okay? So your lesson, lots to do there, but remember, you have to be able to do a finger palm, carry it in your fingers, look natural. You could have a full palm, thumb palm or full palm, but you gotta look natural. You can make it appear, clapping. You can make it appear, one, two, three, one, get ready. Two, it's almost up. Three, it appears. All right, make it vanish. We're coming in, last possible second. Let it drop, grab, vanish. And there we go. A little magic for you guys. Practice it, practice on your friends and family. And later on, if you're allowed to, with your bubble of people, you can do that same thing, if it's palmed, you can just reach up and pull it out of somebody's ear, all right? All right, so thank you guys so much for this lessons and everything, and I think it's time for us to go, so we'll see you later. Bye. This thing's still on? Oh. They left it running. Would you like to see something really dangerous? All right, Simon, they said yes. Come on up. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for Dangerous Juggling with Simon Zenker. All right, so there's, there's many dangerous things you can do. Now, the first thing I should say is, because it is dangerous juggling, I need to tell you that you should not do any of this at home, okay? It is very dangerous. I have trained for a long time. He's been juggling for years and years. So please do not try to replicate anything I do right now, okay? So, 
We're going to take some of the most dangerous objects and juggle them. I've already told you these have been used. But I will not just juggle them. I will juggle them on this. Has anybody ever been on a teeter-totter, a seesaw before? Well, this is like a seesaw, except just for one person. So if I put it down like this, and I put the board on top of it, I have to get, I have to get on. Hold on. I have to wait. I don't know if I'm doing this right. OK. So I put this down in the board. OK. And then one foot on, on the, OK. All right. One foot. Okay, okay. We need to get two feet. One. Two feet! Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Once you're balanced, then you need to start juggling. Okay, I need to get off because I need to get these first. Okay, just gotta move them closer so I can get them. Okay, and on. Ooh. And now I oh I should have just picked them up. Okay. One. Okay, we got one. We got one. We still got two more. Okay. Two. We got two. We got two. We need three. Okay, we got one more. And I am now stuck. Okay. We need to stand up for this. Oh, I need to balance myself. Hold on. Oh no. Come on. Okay. Oh, okay. We are up. Okay. Now we're on the balance board. We need to start juggling. You guys want to see this? Let me hear you scream through your screens. Yeah, okay. We're gonna juggle. Whoa! Then not fall off. Do not try this at home. Hey, there we go. Boom! All right, all right. Yeah, I, I, think, I think they want more danger, right? Would you like more danger? If you do, quick, email the museum at www.museum. No, I'm just kidding. Just scream at the screen. Scream at the screen. Do you want danger? Danger, danger, danger. More danger. danger. Okay, what, what's more dangerous than a plunger used by DJ? Yeah, that's pretty dangerous. I don't know if we can top that. Uh, what could be more dangerous than a plunger? Um, maybe a banana? Maybe... Uh, razor sharp machete. That's dangerous. That's a big step from a banana. Uh, okay, this is only one, so I'll do two plungers and one machete. Okay, two plungers. Oh, oh, you <laughs> you found a second one, of course. Okay, T uh, two machetes and one plunger. Okay, Whew, here we go. Two machetes and one plunger. Three machetes? Who has these? What? Do you want to see him juggle three razor sharp machetes? If you do, email the museum at www. No, just kidding. Just scream at your screen. Well, luckily these are just my plastic ones. I... With the plastic ones. What do you mean plastic ones? The plastic ones that don't chop my fingers off. No, you said pack the razor sharp machetes for the show. 
Uh, you said that. I, no, I said pack the squeaky ones. Oh. <laughs> Oops. You guys want to see me juggle razor sharp machetes? I'm going to assume you said yes. Okay. Ah, I think we need one more step of danger. This, this is not getting me up off the ground high enough. So this little thing, I think, I think we, need, we need a bit, a step up. So we have this cylinder. We got the really big seesaw, okay? So this goes on the ground. And this on top, okay. We're gonna do a little quiz, okay? What's this? It's a cylinder, right? Okay. What are these? Razor sharp machetes you should never use, okay? Do not try this at home. And what's this? It's a board. Hopefully you guys aren't yet. Okay, board on. Okay, danger time. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. And now, the machetes. One, nope, one, nope, one, nope, yes. Two, nope, two, nope, yes. Three, nope, three, nope, three, nope, yes. Okay. Three razor sharp machetes on a towering one man seesaw. Okay. This, whoa, this is how jugglers keep six, six feet distance from everybody, okay? So we gotta get on and juggle three machetes. Okay, in three, two, one, three razor sharp machetes. Woo! Yell at your screens, yell at your screens. Oh, double flip. All right, all right, all right, under the arms. Yo! And yo! Big finish, big finish. Bam! Do not try that at home. Thank you. Quick, we gotta get out of here. The AV guy's back. He has a little corner. Let's get out of here. He's back. Grab your stuff. Get out of here. Plungers, plungers, plungers. plungers. Get them. Get out of here. Whoop! Uh, whoa, that was dangerously awesome. Uh, but next up, we have our friend Riley, who's gonna show us how to make a noisemaker. It's our next sound craft, and that's gonna help you really ring in the new year. Thanks, Ashley. Now we're gonna move on to our next part of our new year, and that is the noisemaker. What better way to bring in the new year than to make a whole lot of noise? And that's what we're gonna do with our craft today. So we're going to be making our noisemakers. So, before we get started, I'm going to kind of explain to you how they work. And this is great because we have a sound exhibit coming up here at the museum. So it's all about how we hear sound, how we see sound, how we perceive sound. So you'll notice in your package that you have two popsicle sticks, two little pieces of straws, two small rubber bands, and a large rubber band. Now, how this works, I'm sure some of you may have made a rubber band guitar before using maybe an old tissue box and some rubber bands. So what you would have done is taken the rubber band and stretched it. Now when I stretch this and I pluck one of the, the parts of the band, you can hear a noise. What's happening is this is the vibrations of the rubber band making those noises. And that's what a lot of sound is. So, when I stretch this, you hear the noise. If I let it go so it's a little bit looser, you'll notice that the noise is a little deeper. And then this, you can barely hear. That's because the vibration is so low. Okay, so that's how a lot of musicians, like guitarists, make all those different sounds. So you'll notice in a bass guitar that when you see them turning the little dials at the end of the guitar, that's tightening those strings or loosening them depending on the sounds that they wanna make. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing, but we're going to be using our breath to vibrate the rubber bands. So when I blow through my little noisemaker, my breath is vibrating those rubber bands and making that sound. So that's how it works. Now, let me show you how to make it. 
So the first thing we're going to do is take one of our popsicle sticks and lay it flat in front of us. Then we're going to take the large rubber band and stretch it. Now be careful, you may need to get an older sibling or a parent or guardian to help you. And we're going to pinch the end on one side because we don't want it to snap back. So pinch the one end and pull it. You take your time to the other end so that you've got your rubber band going all the way along here. So set that down in front of you and we're going to take our straws. Now what the straw does is it's going to keep our two popsicle sticks elevated somewhat so we have some more area for the breath to go through to make those vibrations. If it's too tight, nothing happens. That's because I'm holding down one of the rubber bands so it won't vibrate. But if I let it go, now it's able to vibrate. So take one of the straws and we're going to place our other popsicle stick over top. Then we're going to take the smaller rubber band and wrap it around one end. Just like that. And then you'll kind of have a tweezer situation there for you. Now we're going to do the same on the other side. Take your straw and put it in between. And use the rubber band to tighten that. And then you should be able to blow through it. So let's test it. So that makes a great sound. So something you can actually do, so just like if you've ever seen on a guitar, they can put, the sometimes can play lower to where the rest of the guitar is on the neck or higher. So it makes different pitches and sounds. So if I move one of my straws and blow in between the two straws, <laughs> makes a very different noise than when <laughs> So you can play around with making different sounds and so you can hear that higher pitch. So play around with that and then you can also decorate them to help celebrate this festive day. So there you have it. Now make sure that you're not blowing them all through the rest of this videos and just make sure that we get to blow it right at the end when we're bringing in our new year. So thank you for joining us and I'll send you back to Ashley. Thanks, Riley, for showing us how to make those really cool noisemakers. Kids, don't forget to experiment a little bit with the pitch so you can make it high or low by moving one of those straws around. Sorry, grown-ups. Now it's also time for us to start wrapping up the rest of our craft. So as we're getting closer and closer to noon year, you want to have your noisemaker ready. You want to have your megaphone ready. You've got to get them finished up. So if you want to color them some more or get some grown-up to help you kind of assemble everything, do that now. We've got a little bit of time left. We are so grateful that you could join us today. There was so many things, so many cool stuff that we did together. You guys got to make your two different crafts. You watched a magic and juggling show. You got to dance to some music and you learned a magic trick. We're gonna get ready for the countdown now and it's gonna be followed by a dance party with our friends, the Peanut Butter Jans, who are gonna help us ring in the new year. We hope you had a great time with us today and everyone here at the museum hopes that you have a fantastic 2021.
of kindness yet for old lang
wonderful. She makes a mean steak and she's an eyeful. My baby, she's some kind of wonderful to me. She's some kind of wonderful to me. She's some kind of wonderful. Forget it's no flake, she is mine. So you just say she's wonderful and then be on your Of this old time remedy, put on your dancing clothes, throw off your coat, 
just lit a fire in here. Let's throw another log on and pick up the pace. Get the kindling, a fiddling, and light up the bass. Drumsticks will stir, the guitar will stoke well. That North Country dance band starts blowing smoke. A fire in here. Oh, yeah. Weather, the weather is nice. Oh, weather, the weather is nice. We'll weather the weather, whatever the weather is that North Country. North Country. North Country. North Country dance band is hot. Good cheer. Hope your loved ones here. And we'll see you next year.